Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, March 5th, 2018. And first up on our agenda is Zach here for the budget presentation for South County EMS. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Zachary Smith. I'm the director for South County mm -hmm. EMS. Um, and as probably everybody's aware now, we're the regional EMS service. So we cover Deerfield, Sunderland, Wheatley. And so we have one bu budget, but it's divided up amongst the three towns. So I'll, I'll tell you our whole budget, and then I'll show how it breaks down for Sunderland. Um, real quick, uh, last year, uh, calendar year 2017, we actually saw a 10% increase in the number of patients that we treated. Um, there's a lot of guesses or speculation about why our call volume would be going up. I mean, naturally, call volume is going up just in general as our population ages and more people are working or moving to the area. But I think a lot of it has to do with people just know that we're available now. And in the past where they were doing that math in their head, should I drive myself to the emergency room or should I wait for an ambulance? Um, now they know, they call 911, they're gonna get us um, right away. So I think that probably has a lot to play with, um, a lot to do with that increase in numbers. But um, that increase in numbers also means an increase in revenue. We do charge for our service. So we have our overall budget that we need to keep the lights on and staff and be available and then anybody who uses the ambulance their insurance company gets charged so with that increase in calls um, we're estimating an increase in revenue uh, last year for the last fiscal year is four hundred fifty thousand i think five hundred thousand dollars for this upcoming year um, is a um, solid but conservative um, estimate on that so We've got an increase in our anticipated revenue, which is great. Um, also, our operating expenses, uh, they've gone up by $228. Um, and this is despite some large increases in some of those line items. And basically, that has to do with our efficiency. Our efficiency is getting better. We have a better idea about what our actual costs are now that we have a few years sure. under our belt. A couple of years under, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and we have some more historical data. So some of these values um, are trending. Um, and some of them are averages. So things like uh, medication costs, um, they're anticipated through a trend. So as we do more calls, we use more medications, it costs us more. Um, and then some things like um, maintenance and things like that, they're averages and now we have four years of data to go on. So, so we're really drilling it down in. So operating expenses, we're getting more efficient there. Um, revenue's up and then the kind of the third component of our budget is personnel costs. And so naturally, that's going to be the majority of any, any budget. And though we're a regional service, Town of Deerfield is the fiscal agent. So for the purposes of kind of ha handling all the back office stuff, we're all employees of the Town of Deerfield. So we see an increase in the personnel costs um, for FY19, um, and that's covering a few things. One, the Town of Deerfield did a classification compensation study, so they adjusted all of the the rates there. We also saw an increase in the shift differential. So it was previously 50 cents from 3 to 11 and 75 or 60, excuse me, 65 cents for the overnight. Now it's a dollar and a dollar 50 respectively. So as we factor in the those things um, together, that's why we see a large increase. And then the employee benefits. So as an enterprise fund, we're responsible for all that. We don't get to hide retirement or things like that you know, in another part of the budget. So that's where we see the largest increase. And that's just, you know, retirement, the county retirement board tells us what we're gonna pay them this upcoming year, and we see a 25% increase in that. So it's just kind of the nature of the beast playing in that realm. Uh, Zach, if I could? Yeah. You guys, you guys are fully staffed now to where the target was three years ago? Yes, okay. yeah. So we have uh, eight full time on duty, um, mostly paramedics 24 seven, okay. um, and then we use uh, local responders and um, per diem employees to staff during our busiest hours. Okay. So um, it's, a, it's a great place to be. We're not, we're not panicking so much trying to call out for shifts. That's good. Yeah. Um, overall, um, if you look at our, our past years, the first year of inception, we assessed $750,000 to the member towns. That's all three towns together. So that's what our total budget is less what we expect to make in revenue. Um, and as we 
get better and we kind of understand what's going on, that number has come down. We've also applied more significant retained earnings in past years, and the retained earnings that we have available to us is also diminishing over the years as we get you know, fine-tuned and things like that. So um, for this upcoming year, uh, with the $500,000 in estimated revenue, we're also applying $204,000 in change of retained earnings um, against that. So that's money that we have available, like revenue above expenses and stuff like that from the previous year. So. Well, it's sort of our version of free cash. Yes, it's, it's exactly the same concept, yeah. Um, so all said and done, uh, the Sunderland um, amount, which is 31.48% of the total amount assessed, is $198,893. Um, and that's for our, um, our operating and our staff salaries. Uh, Would you repeat that once more? Yes, I will happily repeat that. $198,893. Thank you. Yep. Um, and, you know, that's, I don't, I don't think I really have to sell this service, but I would be remiss if I didn't point out that for 24-7 paramedic service responsible for even retirements and all that, we're talking $1.3 million a year. You know, that's just the cost of keeping the lights on and doing business. Mm -hmm. And Sunderland, you're covering under $200,000 of that. So I think that's uh, pretty outstanding. We keep, right. we keep getting approached by other communities asking you know, what our secret is. And it's no secret, it's just that we figured it out and we bandied together, so yeah. nice. good. And, and like you're saying, because we, we kind of knew this from the beginning, that we'd need several years before we can kind right. of see a normalization in things and get an right. idea of patterns and costs and things like that, so, which is great. Now that we're, we're getting to see that. Yeah. That's um, good. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I fully expect some some better streamlining and efficiencies once we move into one facility as well yes. and things like that. So I'm hoping in the, in the course of the next year, we'll even be able to drill down even more on those things. Um, we do have a, a capital expense request, um, and it's the <coughs> customary normal $57,000 a year, and that goes, we, we do, uh, it's a five to seven year ambulance replacement um, and so that's just money that we appropriate $57,000 a year and at the end of the five years or six years or whatever it works out to, we have enough to replace our oldest ambulance. Yep. Okay. Is the 57000 that's per town or that's total? That's total. So the Sunderland share of that is uh, 17944 Great question. Which from a, a capital planning perspective, having even a consistent revenue source based on the life cycle of equipment, right. the, type, the type of equipment that's being replaced, you could see rolling stock inventories that are purchased in a, in a, in a series of years. You, know, you end up needing a lot of money in one year. But by planning it out in the way you're, you're fashioning it, that sits in reserve. You're not coming for a borrowing authorization or right. a warrant article. You're, you're funding it, not unlike our capital stabilization here. Right. Very much like yeah. that. Makes things a lot more stable and right. easier to manage. <clears throat> Any specific questions, either about the budget or about the service that um, can answer? You know, it might be good as just to touch on sort of, a, you know, as a follow-up to like the service to folks is like the response times, like how, sure. they, how they've been going too. Sure. Um, you know, I actually... Didn't crunch the numbers specific to Sunderland. Um, our department-wide response time yeah. is seven minutes six seconds. Um, that is from the time somebody dials nine one one to a paramedic is walking through their front door, um, and that's outstanding. And that's department-wide, so that even includes our far reaches out, sure. you know, West Waitley, almost into Florence, you know, or up yeah. on the Monu line or things like that. So the majority of our population, which are centered basically right around the Sunderland Bridge area, um, they see response times usually in the four to five minute range. So, and, um, and again, that's for paramedics. So that's the same care that you'd be receiving in the hospital. Um, and we're also, we're being recognized by the American Heart Association because we have paramedics. We can actually do things and assess for heart attacks mm -hmm. in somebody's home and we can actually bring them, we bypass the emergency room and bring them directly to the cardiac catheterization lab. So okay. um, if somebody were to 
drive themselves to the hospital that might be hours away sure. from receiving that treatment, whereas we're getting them to that treatment in 20 minutes, nice. um, give or take. So it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, we're here. Um, we're able to respond. It's really wonderful. Um, you know, we add our additional staff during our busiest times, so to try to absorb that impact and just trying to. So you, you review those by call volume in a given window. So, so when you say staff in busy, busy time, yeah. so you look at you look at the trends in call volume and pick a circle that says, yeah, here it is. You know, this yeah. this is the high part of the curve, and we need more people here. This this window, whatever that window yes, is. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, our busiest hours are typically between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. With the bias being towards earlier in the day, so our impact shift is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And what that also does that lines up a lot of our per diem staff members are full time paramedics, say in Northampton or Amherst. They may get out of work at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. So by delaying until 10, that gives them that three hour window to freshen up, shower, change their uniform and come in mm -hmm. or things like that, get their kids off to school, stuff like that. So that's why we picked that 10 to 6. That's a big change from several years back before we had South County set up. So when we look at response times and everything, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Great. What, what year is this now? Uh, what years is so we started July 1 2014 so five six seven eight you know yeah. rounding out our fiscal year 15 yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Rounding our fourth year so it's great I think those were some of the uh, items that were up when the first town meeting I came to is so. it yeah was it yeah. yes I moved here that was yeah. around then yeah I, it's certainly it's good to see yeah it, it's great I mean it's certainly um, took a leap of faith on some people's parts to kind of blow up what we had and yeah. And and you know see that it would work, but I think it's been a resounding success. Anyway, cut it. A uh, couple of questions, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, any pressure from insurance companies on reimbursement values, and are we going to kind of be conservative? Is SCEM as conservative with what those anticipated reimbursements are? Uh, yes. So I, I try to this. The five hundred thousand dollars. I think we're probably going to see like five hundred twenty to five hundred and fifty thousand. So yes, being a little bit conservative, we know that the insurance you know market can be kind of volatile depending on what happens either at the state house or down in DC. Right. Um, but it, we've got our ear to all that stuff. We have a lot of advocates at the state level and at the national level, hoping that you know we can keep these things consistent because we're not the only department that's relying on that type of thing. One other that's question, good. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Two others. Um, there's a line item here for rent to each of the each of the three yep. towns. So at some point, hmm. and, and you could tie in maybe timeline for the move to the central facility. Yeah, is that is that relationship with the three other locations going to end, and we're going to have simply one central location? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So we budgeted not knowing when that facility yeah. would be finished or even ever type thing. Mm -hmm. We budgeted as if we were going to stay in our current situation. Got it. Um, the understanding at the Board of Oversight, which is our oversight board for South County EMS, is that when we move into that central facility, we will be paying either, you know, rent, leasing that, putting money back into that facility, and we will no longer be renting that space from the other three agencies. So um, the, our understanding from the town of Deerfield um, and their representation on the Board of Oversight is that there's no way that our rent for that building would ever be higher than this fifty thousand dollars, which we are currently <clears throat> budgeted for. Um, so they were going to find a fair value, and the understanding that that money is going to go back into that facility. So, sit, like <clears throat> the stabilization fund, so for maintenance, exactly and that type of facility, exactly that type of thing. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, are, are there <clears throat> cost projections for cost of operation of that facility? Because what what you don't do in rent is electricity, fuel, correct? Fuel, yeah, um, right. there's none of that right now. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the expectation is that this fifty thousand dollars budgeted, assuming we move in in the near future, yep. will cover all those extra utilities. The starting and stuff point, like that. right? Okay. Um, once we have data about how much that building yep. is costing to occupy, yep. then we will incorporate line items for Smart. that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, last question, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. uh, is turnover an issue? How's how's uh, retained employment? Uh, I, I, turnover is not an issue. I mean, we have people that that have been volunteers in the yep. community for yep. years and years and years, yep. and now that they have a full time 
service, they can go, oh, good, I can finally sleep at night. I, sure. you know, I don't have to worry about getting up or anything like that. Um, for the most part, nobody leaves. Um, we're, everybody likes working here. I've got a list of people who want to work here. Nice. Um, hmm. on, on a daily, weekly basis, people are Those coming up asking about employment. So it's... Moderator is going to have some time in the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been really important to make it a, a, a nice place to work. We've got good camaraderie, um, good. good morale, and, and I think that building is going to help a lot, too. That will get everybody will be, together. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Have, have a sense of ownership as well and, and pride in the service. And on that subject, is there a timeline for the move, or are we not? No, yeah, I know. I understand it's. I understand yeah. the mechanism that's being built. Yeah. by get all that. So, I, when the building first was being built, from people who build buildings, you know, they kind of looked at it, and and the understanding was early spring, yep. um, which we're rapidly approaching. Driving by it, it's buttoned up. Yeah. You know, all the work is inside. I, right. so, no, see what's um, going on. I, yeah. it's, it seems to be imminent, and I would think within the next few months or so, but again, I, I have no idea. And is the building fitted out? This will be my last, my last question, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Is, mm -hmm. is it fitted out, or is it, is it, does it need to be fitted out by the agency? Uh, the short answer is we're anticipating having to fit it out. Got it. We, we expect that anything that isn't otherwise bolted to that building is mm -hmm. going to be our responsibility. Makes sense. Um, so we are planning worst case contingent. We're, you know, we've got a list of things that we feel the department should have to supply, mm -hmm. um, things that maybe community members or organizations might want to donate to the building or things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but we won't, until we get those keys and we walk through that threshold, we're not going to know exactly okay. what that looks like. It's like purchase versus purchase and equip. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yep. it's, it's like, oh, the equipment. All right. Anybody else have any questions at all for Zach? You guys, you guys all set? Great, great. Right. Keep up the well, good thanks. work. I really appreciate, appreciate all, that you, um, all that you guys do. Yeah, it's a good example of a great service. So. Yeah, yeah, and um, we'll we'll make sure we have an open house and everybody can come by I, and I think that would be good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I I tell people you can swing by anytime you want, and our our friendly staff will let you play with the stretcher or something. Like <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, you know, I'd rather see you on a social call than than otherwise. Right, so. on the stretcher. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's true. Well, thank you very much. Right, thanks. thanks so much, Zach. Yes. Have a good night. Thank you. Well, it's a piece of history, you know, it, and the surface, if you look back 2009, of course, it looks like because of the budget construct the town has, it's, 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 an, it's an extraordinary change in the way we actually allocate resources. Yep. The reality is it was designed to have 24-7 paramedic service within whatever the target was, 8.14 minutes, or as I recall the study. Yep. And four years later, that's what you got. Nope, exactly. There's no way the town could have taken on that service as a standalone. I could, I would suspect that Deerfield and Whitley would say the same thing. What's the total nope. operating budget? Yeah, between your insurance reimbursement, he said it was about 1.3. 2.3. Yeah, one million three thirty-six two fifty-five for total operating expenses. <clears throat> And there, there's a, a, an example of a great service that is awesome to know that it's there, and hopefully you'll never need it. But if you do, it, it's going to make all the difference. And just that drop in response time yeah. can make the difference between somebody's life and, and death. And that's amazing. I think it's it's a fantastic thing. Yeah, knowing that they they can bypass the ER and go straight yes, to cat right stuff there. is huge. Yeah, that, that it's a, huge. It's a big really deal. big thing, right? And you've got somebody from the get-go yeah. who's fully, you know, able to take care of you from a cardiac perspective, yeah. or, or any other. I mean, there's you know all sorts of other accidents. You know, lot, no shortage of car accidents and things out there yeah. today. So these days, so that's fantastic. All right, so we have minutes from two twelve. Right. I think First. these minutes are yeah. Concerned. Yeah, <laughs> it's a riveting section. Yeah, it is. Uh, this is a fire department budget presentation. I'll uh, I'll move the minutes as presented. All right, uh, and I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we have the minutes of February 26, which was last week in our elementary school budget presentation. 
Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. That was a nice short one. Uh, I will also uh, move to accept the minutes of February 26th. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, two zero on that one. Uh, let's see. And we got Good. to board them. Okay. Just, Mr. Chair, yeah. as we talk about those minutes from the last week's meeting, mm -hmm. sitting at the, this table, of course, there's a lot of information that have gone through. And I appreciate the fact that FCAT has had the meeting in a pretty steady rotation. Um, between the elementary school and Frontier, the vast majority of uh, the tax burden on the taxpayer is tied up in those two budgets. Yes. And I hope people will take time to watch those even segments of those to understand what some of the backstory or the pressure on uh, their operating expenses are, because it directly correlates to the pressure that we have uh, as we go forward with our total budget uh, development. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank FCAT for having it out there uh, pretty consistently. Appreciate that. Um, and we go on to Board of Selectmen updates. I don't have any, but I would like to mention along those lines that tomorrow night at 6 o'clock over at Frontier will be their uh, school committee's meeting and their uh, approval of the budget. So okay. if the, that's another opportunity. If you if you have the time, it might be good to get over there and um, check that out. <clears throat> well, with respect to Selectmen's updates, we have a Sherry is scheduling a finance working group Mm. For this coming week, next Tuesday, there is also a um, 120 North Main Street meeting. I think it's on Tuesday night. So those continue to move forward. We had a, speaking of North Main, we had a good meeting last week on the, uh, the North Main. So I think we kind of made some good progress and, and reached a good consensus, at least out of that room, on where to go yeah. and take some next steps. So That's that was good. Point. I mean, the people, the people who attended the meeting on North Main Street's reconstruction last uh, week uh, were um, open to discussion, respectful inside the room. Mm -hmm. We had DOT engineers, sorry, mass dot engineers here, and it didn't feel like it was a complete cross examination. There was a little, but it wasn't that bad. Yes. Everybody left, I think, in a better position with what, from a board's perspective, my personal perspective as a board member is what the appropriate steps are to contact to write, what the timing of those things is, what happens to get kicked out of the tip or off the schedule. And uh, I think those steps are, are, I know those steps are moving forward. We're at correspondence today right. from uh, CHA about the additional costs for yeah. engineering. So that's a good thing. Yeah, there's a lot of mechanics involved with that right. process. So right. it's important to make sure we know about them and, right. and, and know what our deliverables are. In it. Correct. So that's good. Um, do you have any exciting updates for sure? Uh, let's see. Uh, last week on Thursday, we had training for the new accounting software and for the new website. Nice. Um, and so we're looking forward to launching uh, the new website, the updates, um, uh -huh. updated version of the website on Wednesday. Um, and we're moving forward with the new accounting software uh, too. So that's good. Uh, we locked into oil. Two dollars and sixteen cents per gallon okay. for fiscal nineteen. I think that's up a little bit, but I'm not sure what the exact probably is. based on fuel prices. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would make sense. And that's about it. All right. Anything we need on our uh, town meeting timetable for tonight? Let's not see. for tonight. Not I for think tonight. next week uh, we Which will. 15th? Next next, one, yeah, next yeah. Thursday the warrant articles are due. Okay. So again, people, with respect to the, the annual town meeting, we have it still listed annual and special. But anyway, our annual town meeting schedule for next Thursday the 15th, the warrant actually and warrant petitions are required to be in by noon time. So the warrant was opened, the meeting was called, the date was announced. The warrant currently is open, and it closes March 15th at noontime. So if you're interested in the warrant article, it's important to bear in mind. Get them to the board. 
And that's because our warrant has to be ready to go nearly six weeks before the annual town meeting. So that's a hard that's mess. yeah, it's a bylaw date, it's done. It doesn't really mess with those dates. No. And I would say too, if people have any questions or need some information, email us, call us, let us know. If, especially if we can help you get some information so that you've got it to if you're coming to the meeting, you're prepared, rather than taking the time there to go through like those types of things. That way, you know, you come in and, and you're prepared to debate your point with with your the information that you need. That helps right. a lot. Good point. We'll be more than happy to get information. Or if you get suggestions on um, what might be helpful information-wise. So, it's always a, a good thing. And closing at that at far in advance gives us the chance to get all of our information in order. <laughs> warrants are to warrants are uh, important historical documents. Mm -hmm. they're, they're recognized as the temperament of the town, and the vote that's cast on those warrants is the legislative body taking action. So oh. we take it seriously. That would be all of you with the town, the legislative body. Right. So. That's that whole we the people thing there, really. People. And it's <laughs> in its finest form, yep. That's right. <clears throat> All right. So next up we have Thanks, Bob. Good night. Good night. Good night. Amanda Lapaca. Um, and he asking us to be a come a tree city USA. Let's see. So we received this in the seventh? Yes. Okay, oh, sorry, the original correspondence was the seventh. That's that's fine. Yeah. Sure if we Hardwick Tree City and what no, benefits? No, not that I'm aware of any. Oh, yeah. Anyway, not yet. I'm just curious about any any pitfalls. I appreciate first of all the, the energy and effort that this working group has put together to recommend this to the board. Yep. I think I would ask that we ask other we reach out to other communities either through Stam community Stam network or to see what what Get some what, feedback what the feedback of their experience has been. Yep, uh, I think that would be a good idea. Just from a conceptual standpoint, you know, it looks good. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things I think we're doing, but it might help us get a little more um, structure around some mm -hmm. of the things. But yeah, you raise a great point. Yep. I think there's there's a there's a general there's a general feel that you know the that the that the town takes care of trees up and down North and South Main Street. And yet, right. if you talk to the highway superintendent and how much work goes in and thought goes into trees and all of the roads. In all of the areas around the community, that this could certainly be very, very helpful. Yeah, I think so. And especially too, with you know, a lot, of, especially on Main Street, a lot of the trees are the same age. Yep. So, you know, you're yep. going to start to see a little, you know, yep. we start to lose some, and then yep. with a lot of the wind events we seem to have been getting around Ooh. here. You know, we have a request to replace four or five mm -hmm. on Do we? South Main. So. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely something we. Like to keep up on top of. Should we get that, that feedback maybe for our next agenda, Sherry? Sure, sure yeah. I don't want to have them hanging out for too long. Yeah. And it looks like the part of this will be adoption of a statute as well, so there'll be a town meeting function. Yes. Right? Establishing I a tree think board so. and yeah. then town the ordinance. We have to adopt the mass general yeah. law, so it's got to be important to bear in mind. And a new sign to put up, probably. Right? Sure yes. Yeah, <laughs> they'll mail us one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everybody gets a new sign. Yep. We're going to need a bigger um, section to put all of our signs. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> all right. Next up, we have an energy committee appointment. Or Carol Ryan. <coughs> this is from Aaron Falbell to the board. Recently, we were approached by Carol Ryan of 1C Berry Lane, who has expressed interest <coughs> in joining our committee. She's attended our last few meetings and has participated in our recent window insert workshops and um, so she's interested in joining the committee now that she's no longer working so that's a recommendation by Aaron from the energy committee uh, a move to a point for the remainder of the year uh, appointment cycle um, uh, Carol Ryan to the energy committee knowing that our appointment calendar is <coughs> coming up so June. <coughs> right excuse me yep <coughs> All right, and uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, two to zero on the appointment. And then we have a common VIT license for the Dove's Nest. 
So it sounds like the Dove's Nest got new owners. Yes. Keeping that's the same that's, name. That's good. And this is just the common vet license. Um, really an order on that from we've done their their, their common bit so their license to be in business is a little different that'll come next and of course there's other this this Vittler's license only allows for the sales at the site there's still health board of health fire department yes, there's other all those sales. other restaurant inspections that have to go forward before they can actually open but we do want to you know invite them in uh, at some point chat with them yep. get them on TV free yeah, advertising and, uh, right? if nothing else right perfect let everybody know what's going on because I think a lot of people had gone there and yeah. now it's closed so I uh, moved to grant common Vic license for 2018 to uh, uh, Dove's Nest here at 285 Amherst Road Sunderland I'll second that all those in favor aye uh, two to zero on that one <clears throat> and with that did well, we can keep going for it's only about 25 past yes, all right so. <laughs> we'll make up for last I, I know, right? yeah. <clears throat> so that that brings to the end our official agenda um our next meeting will be monday march 12 2018 and uh do we have a motion to adjourn uh, move to adjourn mr chair all those in favor aye, aye. all right two to zero